I found this fella at a recent rally I was at. It's an old-fashioned cross-cut saw. I'm gonna fix her up and see if I can get her cutting again. I'm after finding my favorite screwdriver again, so we can use that to screw out the nuts that hold on the handle then. Now that we have the handle on its own, we should just be able to pull it out. To remove this handle here, we just need to screw it off a bit. And then eventually, that'll kind of wiggle itself out. So the blade there now, it's caked in rust, so we'll see to that. We give her a splash of our good old friend WD-40, and then come at it with 80 grit sandpaper. After about an hour, I finally have the two sides free from any sort of rust. Next thing is to throw them into the vise here. Grab our triangular file and sharpen every single tooth one by one. Another hour later and we have all the teeth razor sharp. So now we need to set them with this tool here. It's called a saw set. And how it works is you just slap the teeth of the saw into it here. So that's, this one kind of matches the profile. And then we just twist on it like this. And it slightly bends the teeth of the saw so that they're wider than the body of the saw. So that it can slide through better. Last thing I'm going to do is just spruce up the handles a bit with sawdust. It's not necessary, but I think it might make it look a bit nicer in the end. So we have it sanded there now, so it's gonna get a drop of linseed oil here and rub it in, and that kind of makes the grain pop out a bit more. Now all that's left to do is put it back together and then take it for a test drive. Cool thing about the second handle here is you can attach it right next to the handle if you're using it on your own, or you can attach it at the very end here if there's two people on either end of it. There we have it now, lads. Look how well that cleaned up. I'm here in an estate now where I'm going to test out the saw. But check this place out, some of the trees around here are unbelievable. The camera doesn't do it justice, lads. But I'd say that's just about the biggest ash tree I've ever seen in my entire life. Take a look at these limestone pillars and these hand-forged gates. You just don't get anything like this anymore. The driveway and everything, just magnificent trees everywhere you turn your eye to. This is what we came here for, so we have a nice little small enough log here that we're just going to test it out on, so we're just going to pull a few times to make the first few little grooves into the wood and then eventually we can start doing the full pass once we get a bit of a rhythm going and use the full length of the blade it's making nice enough sawdust and taking a deep enough cut every single time There we go, lads. Happy days. There we go now, lads. I'd say we'll hang on to the chainsaw for a while yet. This beast wasn't the only saw I picked up at the rally. I also got this little dovetail saw here. Now, it's not exactly in mint condition, but we'll fix it up and see if we can cut a dovetail with it. Now, I couldn't remove the handle from the blade, so I'm just gonna grab some 80 grit sandpaper and sand everything while it's still attached together. When all has rust and will not come clean, though you scrub the best you can, when nuts lock tight like a priest's handshake, a drop of WD-40 is your only man. Blades looking fairly clean now, lads, so time to move on to the handle. Leave the handle sanded there, so get a bit of linseed oil onto the hands and just kind of lather it into the handle. That kind of protects the wood and makes the grain pop a bit more. So we have it looking fairly clean now, so next we need to throw her into the machinist vise. Grab our triangular file here and just sharpen all the teeth. So the teeth are sharp now, but look what happens when we cut into some wood. It's very stiff. So in order to fix this, we need to set the teeth. So we use this fella, it's called a saw set. So I've measured this, it's 15 teeth per inch. I have this set to 15 teeth. So every second tooth then we're just gonna press down this and it'll slightly warp the teeth making them wider than the, than the blade here. So now that the saw has been set, it takes a very nice, clean, quick cut without getting stuck. Now the best way to test out a dovetail saw is of course to cut dovetails. Now I'm nobody's cabinet maker, but I have two bits of wood here and we'll see if we can dovetail them together. So we need a few tools to make our dovetails. First of all, we have our marking gauge, our square, our marking knife, and then finally this fella here, which we just line up against our piece of wood and scribe in our dovetail. We have it marked out, time to test out the saw. So just one or two quick pulls so it sets into the groove and then. Damn, she cuts very quick, no problems at all. Grand job. Then we can grab our coping saw. And just cut out the chunks here. 
So now we have it like this. We just use our chisel here just to finish it up, make all the edges perfect. The other piece marked out here, so it's another excuse to use the dovetail saw. So we have the two pieces here like this, so we just need to line them up against each other. And they don't squeeze into place, so we have our hammer here. I'm just going to gently tap them into each other. There we go, lads. Now, like I said, I'm nobody's cabinet maker, but it's a strong enough old joint. They're a good thing to practice, the old dovetails. But anyway, sound one.